So, as well as sorting out the menu, we've also been wrestling with some of the office furniture and trying to make it look a little bit neater than it was. I mean, this was just thrown together at one point. But now, I'm sure you'll agree, it's beginning to look like an office, and previously it just didn't. Uh, a few things to make note of, obviously. Thank you to everyone who commented about this computer the other day. I have had a look, and the... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The, um, what's it called? Graphics card on here is indeed... Where did I see it the other day? Uh, it doesn't matter anyway, I can... I could see the graphics card on here and we had a look and turns out it is about a £40-£50 one but if I'm honest it's way better than anything I've got in any of my machines and then there was a couple of concerns shared something I mentioned obviously uh, what's it called GDPI or G what's it called nowadays I can't GDPR of course so yeah, I came into the machine and I did indeed completely uh, format this hard drive. So that bad boy's empty. I'm not going to format this hard drive because it's got a bit of my stuff on there still. And there are still these user accounts on here. But we're going to slowly but surely just delete them. We just have to be careful that there aren't any program files in here uh, or application data you see there's some application data in there so we're going to skip that and we'll just check that we're not deleting any application data which will corrupt Windows now I know Windows 7 is well one might say obsolete but I know people who've still got XP on their machines I'm sure you might know somebody who's got Windows 95 or even earlier. So they've got their f uses in their own right. And as the old adage goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And usually the only way these things get broke is by either low downloading other programs or installing the updates that Microsoft send out for them. Somebody said I could get Windows 10 for free by using the product key from this one. Well, I've got the product key on this machine. But I can't find anywhere that will allow me to upgrade to Windows 10 by using this existing product key without spending £200 or more for the Pro version, at least, which is of course what we want. And uh, I think I'm just going to stick with this. What we got on this machine, now this machine runs BMS, and let's wake it up. I'm not sure actually what operating system we run on here so it might be worth just having a look this could be eight you know that's Windows 7 Home Premium so that's 7 Home Premium that's 7 Pro I think we're gonna stick with them they're mutually compatible aren't they to an extent I'd like to also thank Martin for the time as he brought across yesterday I noticed they've not been plugged in for a while because quite a few of them the battery seems to have run out but they just need plugging in they'll charge back up now this door this is where we've thrown all of the junk have you seen this room before holy holy shit there's everything in here and you know when people say including the kitchen sink Yes, including the kitchen sink. We've got stainless steel coils. We've got, you're not going to believe me, that is a conservatory. <laughs> We've got fridges, freezers. We've got my own, my old university books here, look. Oh my God. Look at these. Here we go. Water chemistry. Hey, that's rather fitting, isn't it? Bit of water chemistry. Hold on. The book's called Water and Life. But yes, this kind of stuff here is what changed my career completely. 
because if I didn't do all of this open university stuff which absolutely opened my eyes then I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now these are all like you know the thick books and there's a lot of info in them and this is all back in the early noughties changing China journey through a changing world really interesting subjects they were I remember them well I've not got a photographic memory but yeah I definitely remember quite a lot of these books now I've saved we don't have room at home at the moment the house is really small that we live in and that's another story altogether but I as a child and a teenager and a young man was an avid collector of books and literature now that one's not mine of course that'll probably be Dominic's or something oh it's, yeah baby's guide to signing but this is the kind of stuff I was into let's shed some light on this because I actually want to share it with you now so I'll just turn this light on and we'll have a look at some of the books so Reader's Digest working with wood oh no this isn't Reader's Digest sorry that's underneath but there you can see where I learnt some of my practical skills this is the Reader's Digest Atlas of the British Isles I had this as a child this book <clears throat> and yeah it really was one of my favourite books to look in because I wanted to explore as much of the UK as possible and it had these wonderfully detailed maps of places and there is a part in here I wonder where it is where oh yes places to visit so it's at the back and this this is what really got me interested in traveling around the UK and the first time I actually went to Wales was off the back of this book because I wanted to go and see the falls at the Vale of Neath and we went to see them there I can't remember what they were called now because it's that long ago but one of the first things I did as soon as I passed my driving test we did indeed drive to Wales South Wales and go and have a look at the falls I'm really turning the pages in haste now because my phone battery is about to die and I would actually like to show you the page before it disappears but I don't think we're going to be able to do that because obviously I'm not doing this it's not scripted it's all off the cuff and I really would like to show you some more of my books as well oh you bugger it's not going to let me do it anyway I can't find it in haste so that's that what we got here cookbook American food Tom might like that yes indeed I didn't own a Seat Beefer but I owned a Seat Inca van and it was very similar to that oh look here's another one I think there is definitely a theme running through these books here don't you and as you can see I was a big fan of all the old ones I used to spend hours and hours going around the charity shops searching for these kind of books the kind of books that your grand and grandma might have in their uh, grandma and granddad might have in their house but uh, upon their passing they just get donated to a charity shop there's some more look oh, well what more can I say the practical commercial self-educator now how many people have read that not many I dare say watching this channel but uh, get a copy I think you might find it it's interesting cider making here we have another the universe book of hobbies and handcrafts 
You see what I mean? I do love this kind of stuff and I'm absolutely not throwing these books away. Here's something I know this is about the Cairngorms, which I was given to, uh, on a job a few years ago. And uh, yeah, very interesting stuff. And then there's a few more over here. I remember buying these ones from a charity shop actually. It came like a section of four of them. A complete library to the guy at garden showing you how to do uh, propagate grafts and you know all that kind of stuff composting like I said there are three or four of these in here somewhere I don't know where exactly they are and then there'll be some of my old granddad's cookbooks ah the Encyclopedia Botanica now this bad boy I had a copy of this given to me by my grandfather when I was very 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 young this is it and as you can see it's well used and well thumbed and then I spotted another copy in a charity shop I just had to buy it this was also one of my granddad's books the Reader's Digest Illustrated Guide to Gardening and again this I, I was an odd teenager I spent hours and hours going through this kind of stuff absolutely loved it here's another one of his this was a good one the gardening year where the patterns have changed a wee bit since then wouldn't you agree but yeah it's like walking back through time looking at these books and they've got a lot of sentimental value to me and there's no way in the world that i'd be getting rid of them now if i throw a few of these books back in here which will allow me to get back to this blue folder at the bottom this will make you laugh this will make you laugh before the days of YouTube there were the days of proper like making your own scrapbooks and logs and this is me out uh, with a friend and my old dog Bonnie and we're out hunting rabbits you can tell it's me look look at the pliance you can just tell and yeah we are indeed hunting for rabbits and uh, there I am sporting a coney or two what do you think to that oh yeah it was brilliant back in the day look at that for a moon face rabbit in the net and there's a ferret going down the hole Really interesting stuff. I used to knit all my own nets as well. And oh, Jesus Christ, we're talking. This is the 1990s. Oh, it's a lifetime ago. Here's some of my ferrets in their cages. There's me with a big bag of rabbits. This chap, um, Marco, his name, I think he was from Romania. And uh, we took him out with us once, and he was absolutely fascinated. He was new to the country. This chap here, Jamie, he ran off with my uh, girlfriend years ago and they've got kids now. don't know if they're married or not. I really miss him. And, uh, yeah, and there's my best mate, Rich, who uh, I don't see much of these days. But, yeah, that, it was me and Rich who got up to all this nonsense back in the day and I enjoyed every minute of it. There's my childhood doggy look, Bonnie whip it cross anyway just thought I'd share that with you interesting little 10 minutes to addendum onto one of the most beautiful walks I've had through Clumber Park yet and yeah I guess you can leave me here to tidy all this lot up oh and by the way the books don't just stop there if we come over here all of these boxes what are they full of, you might ask? They are indeed full of books. Oh yes. And what's down there in that carrier bag? More books. One might say, I'm book mad. Right, there's a lot to do and I don't really feel in the mood to do it. So I'm probably going to go and get a beer and go home. <laughs> would you like to join me? Freaking right you would.
So I thought before I go home, what do we want to do? That's right, have a pint. So this is the five pints best bitter. I haven't quite got five pints. I've maybe got two. Now I've got to drive home after all. So I'll probably just have this one. If indeed I finish it because it is still a little bit on the yeasty side as you can see. But it just needs to condition and chill and you know whatever else. The smell though as soon as I took it off the tank. Amazing. Malty. Bready. Bready is how I'd describe it. That marisotta shining through the earthy spiciness of the fuggles. Bit like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. Which is odd because I'm rather kind of neutral with Marmite. Anyway, this is definitely like uh, that characteristic fuggles aroma. And I frankly love it in a best bitter. It's the ideal beer style for that hop. You know, they were made for each other. Marisotta and Fuggles and Best Bitter. What a combination. Shall we get it? I think so. First thing that I'm getting from that is that maltiness. Now this particular version of this recipe is nowhere near, nowhere near as bitter as the version I've got at home in bottle. I'd be very interested to see what this is like after it's had a couple of weeks to condition and we've dropped a lot of fish yeast cake out. Now on a relatively low ABV beer, which this is realistically, the yeast can give you a bit more of a fuller mouth feel and throw you off the scent a little bit when it comes to getting a real idea of the bitterness of a beer and sometimes on the hoppier beers if you drop all of the sediment and the troop out of a beer it can be less bitter and sometimes on the lighter beers it can be more bitter so it depends exactly what's being held into suspension I suspect here it's yeast because there's been no dry hop to speak of in this beer and in something like a big IPA I'd imagine you've got a lot of hop particle in suspension which would probably contribute to a little bit of that uh, you know little little tanginess on the tongue so to speak this you see to me is much closer to the five points that I recognise on cask which is what I'm used to. I'd never actually had it in bottle before and it was an absolute surprise to me to find out how bitter it actually turned out to be. This is much more uh, laid back. This is letting the fuggles in terms of flavour and spiciness play through but it is more about the marisotta and it's a very easy drinking beer oh I love it I could uh, take a dozen cans home if I had them I don't have them though unfortunately mmm so there we go, I think that's me done. Oh, I'm not going to drink all of it on camera. I'm pushing my luck a little bit there, I think, aren't I? So we'll see you probably tomorrow morning for a walk, if you can stomach another one. Cheers, boys and girls.